Father in heaven, this morning we are glad that we can come on your Sabbath to church. We are following the example of Jesus. He used to go to church every Sabbath to worship you with others. And dear Lord, we are glad that we are here in a group as, a, as friends and brothers and sisters, as your children, Father, with a, a, a heart full of gratefulness. We lift our voices to you, Father, for truly you are good. You are merciful and caring. Your love over us, Lord, you lavish it in abundant streams, Father, so much so that we cannot count your blessings upon us. Dear Lord, this morning as we study your word, we pray that you will bless us as you have done it every single uh, meeting that we have had. Speak to our hearts, soften our minds, that we may, Lord, accept the message and take it as coming from your lips and not as coming from me, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. In 1982, as a family, we strike our time of disaster. In the, in the winter of 1982, we, uh, the, the only house we ever had in Chile was burned to the ground. We lost absolutely everything we had. They, we, we left, you know, I was left with a pair of old shoes and some clothes that I had on. The, the, the house was basically burned down, uh, you know, with the, the doors closed. In Chile, there's nothing like insurances, so uh, we just lost everything. We became poor as poor can be. Then my uncle lent us another house to live in until we recovered, and in September, that very same year, we had the misfortune of a, a terrorist attack taking place just in front of our house. You see, it was the time of Pinochet, and communism was showing off that they didn't like Pinochet in power, and so they used to put bombs everywhere, and we lived in a farm far away from the city, but there was a, a pipe that carried gas from the port all the way through to the city, and they bombed that, that, that pipe. And what actually happened was that they put a bomb, a small bomb that cracked the pipe, and, uh, and that spilled gas everywhere, and about half an hour later, another bomb detonated, and it was a huge explosion. It blew all our windows, all our doors, and so again, we lost almost everything we had. People had given us. And then in December that year, my brother was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And in Chile, we don't have Medicare, so it cost us around, in those days, $300,000 for the operation, and we didn't have a cent, so we had to go in debt to pay my brother. You know, and uh, the family was truly in misery. We had nothing with a debt up to the neck, but my mom, and, my mom and my dad had faith in the Lord, and I remember that Christmas. We all thought that it was going to be a sad Christmas, but I remember my mom making her best effort to give us the best Christmas, uh, Christmas ever that year, and she did. She dressed herself as Santa Claus because my dad didn't want to have a part with Santa Claus, and, uh, and I understand why, but my mom, in order to, to cheer up the hearts of her children, she put on a huge show. We didn't have any presents because we didn't have money, but we had the greatest laughter and a really nice dinner that uh, Christmas, and we had a beautiful time. You know what, if my mom, being an imperfect mother, wanted the happiness of her children, how much more do you reckon God wants to see his children happy? Amen? God is a loving God who is a perfect father, and he longs to see his children happy. Right through this series, we have been learning that God has invested everything he had and everything he was in order to make his children happy. Amen? The cross stands as an eternal monument to the desire of God to see his children happy. Amen? And last night we learned that the Sabbath is the second most important monument that reminds us that God is our Father, and as a Father, He wants to bless us. And what is the purpose of a blessing? A blessing is God's way to make us happy. And so, dear friends, tonight, to this morning I'm going to share with you one of God's ways to make His children happy. In the book of 3 John, it's a small book that has only one chapter. The beloved apostle writes, Beloved, I pray that you, that you may prosper in all things, and be in health, 
just as your soul prospers. I want you to notice that text because that text is showing the mind of God. In that text, John says that God is not only concerned with our material wellness, and, not only, and God not, not only is concerned also with our spiritual wellness, God is deeply concerned also with our physical wellness. In other words, God wants you to be happy in three different areas. He wants you to be happy economically. And God will provide for that if you give Him the first place. God wants you to be happy spiritually. And the only way to be happy spiritually is to have a living relationship with Him. But third, and it's a point that we don't usually con consider, it is the fact that God wants you to be healthy. Because God knows very well that there is a direct relationship between the body, the mind, and the spirit. And if you are not healthy in your body, your mind will not be as happy as it should, and your soul will be deprived of the blessings that can have. And so God wants His children to be happy in all areas of life, and this morning I'm going to show you how God wants you to be happy in your body, how He wants you to be healthy. And so third John... Third John uh, verse 2 says that, but notice what Psalm chapter 103 and verse 3 says. It says here, talking about God, God is the one who forgives all your iniquities. That is spiritual well-being, isn't it? You, we cannot be happy spiritually if you are carrying a bag of unforgiven sins, true? True? If you are carrying a bag of guilt and shame, if you are constantly crushing yourself because of what you've done in the past, you cannot be happy. And God wants to forgive you. Because He knows that if you are forgiven, you'll be happy. But notice what He says here. God says, who forgives all your iniquities, and notice next. What is it? Who heals all your diseases. Not only God wants to give you health in the spirit, but God also wants to give you health of your body. God is as much interested in giving you eternal life as He is to give you life right now. We learned at the beginning that in on, you, can, you can have life only in Jesus. Amen? And Jesus is the great healer. Did you know that in the Bible, in the New Testament, the word for salvation and the, way, and the word for healing is exactly the same word. For example, when Jesus heals a paraplegic and says, your faith has healed you, that Greek word also means your faith has saved you. So, in other words, in the, in the mind of God, healing and saving is the same thing. Because God not only wants us to have eternal life, but He also wants us to enjoy life where? Here, right now. God wants to make you well as He wants to give you eternal life. Why does God want you to, to have uh, health now? There's a number of reasons why God wants to give you health right now. The first one is because sickness. Listen to this. Sickness. Is an invention of sin. In other words, friends, we get sick because we live in a world of sin. Amen? And so God wants His children who live in His kingdom to be healthy. Because if you are healthy, it is a sign that you have, been, you have entered into the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there is no disease. Amen? The Bible says that in, Revela in Revelation chapter 21 that God is going to recreate planet earth. And in this new world, there's going to be no death, no disease, no pain, nothing that will hurt. God will do away with all disease. But the beautiful thing is, friends, is that God wants us to begin to enjoy His kingdom right now. And one of the privileges of His kingdom is the fact that God wants to heal you from all your diseases. Isn't that beautiful? Do you believe that? Now,